Guys, there has been a reigning king when it comes to knife locks in the knife industry for a lot of years. Since the 80s, when Chris Reeve first started making the Reeves Integral Lock, the RIL. This is the frame lock. And there's a lot of reasons why it's winning. And I'm going to tell you why. So let's turn this around and take a look at it from above. All right, guys, you saw the intro. We're going to talk about how the frame lock became the king of the knife locks. Now, I know that there are a lot of other locks on the market. Um, you have back locks, button locks, liner locks, axis lock. Um, you have out the front switch blades that have their own unique locking systems that are very complex. Uh, you have new takes on the button locks, such as this integral pivot lock, which is basically a button lock that's enclosed in the pivot. But for years, the frame lock has been the king of lock mechanisms, and I'm going to explain why. So a little bit of history. That's why the Chris Reeves Sabenza is out. Back in the 80s, uh, Chris Reeve decided he wanted to have a lock that was very similar to a lock that most custom knife makers were using in the tactical realm, which was a liner lock. Because back in the day, not all the liner locks were very good. They were kind of weak. They had a tendency to fail. And what he wanted was something very similar, but with a stronger lock, something more robust. And so what they came up with was an integral lock that came, became part of the scale of the knife. So you wound up with two pieces of titanium, and then they would cut this out. And the way this works is this is under springs. It's easier to see on this one because it's a bigger knife. Um, so you cut this area here, you bend it over, and you make a spring out of this piece. It's all cut out. And then you make this face marry up with a radius area on the tang of the knife. And so it just drops in there, and you can see that radius there. And when it drops in, it kicks over and it locks. Newer ones have got a steel lock bar insert, but the originals were just titanium on steel, as this one is. And what that allowed them to do was have a very easy process to make the lock. That also was a lot easier because the back in the day, if you didn't have a liner lock, which a liner lock was a liner lock like this one, this is a more modern liner lock. They are very robust. They are good locks. I, the newer liner locks are great. But with a liner lock, you had the ability to single hand open and close a knife. Your other option at that point, you had some button locks and things like that, but button locks were not great back in the day. You had this, which is a back lock. Well, that was not one handed open and close. A lot of them were one hand to open like Spyderco's. You could one hand open this knife, but you had to two hand close it. So this allowed you to one hand operate and manipulate that knife open and closed. So now you had a strong lock that was single hand operation. Why do we still use them though? That's the question. When there's so many other locks in the market, you have access locks, which are one hand open and close, and they're absolutely ambidextrous. You have button locks, which are both single handed open and closed ambidextrous. You can do that uh, single handed and you can use it just like the access lock where you can disengage the lock and flip it open. Well, there's a reason. And it's because of the simplicity of this lock. So when you look at this, this is an extra piece. This has to be machined separately. This has to be machined to match. You have to have the ability to put the spring tension on it. You have to marry up these parts where you have this cutout and key where they drop into each other. And then this has to be assembled together with the proper spring tension and everything in here or your lock doesn't work. Button locks. Button locks, you have to have the, the point where the, the plunger drops in and it goes and where it drops in for the lock and the open position. And then there's a spring. So you have to mill this separate. And then this has to be milled at an angle so that it drops in there and causes your lock. You can see that plunger is angled. There's a lot of moving parts to this. The axis lock in here, you've got this crossbar that sits with two springs. Each one of these is an additional machining step. And when you have additional machining steps, that's time. The more time on the machine, the more money. This is simple. It's cut out, it's kicked over, and it becomes a two-piece piece of machinery. So you make this scale, you make this scale. These are EDM, that's why they're so fine. You can see that, they're, they're cut out with an EDM machine. Um, and so it's cut out, and it allows you to basically take two pieces and make 
and inc make what could be a complex lock mechanism and not have a lot of additional machining. So machining time costs a lot of money. Liner locks. Now you're saying I was talking about liner locks being so much stronger. Well, I have to make my scales and then I have to make my liners. So you're looking at one, two, three pieces. Add your hardware in one, two, three, one, two, three, four. You look at maybe, what do you talk? Two bearings, a blade, six. Uh, let me do the math. Sorry about that. I, I don't do well with trying to figure it out. It's about 10 pieces. If you, if, if you exclude like extra stuff like pocket clip and stuff like that, pocket clip screws. So you're looking at about 10 pieces on this knife. But when you look at these other knives, just in the handle, I've got four pieces here, then the, the pivot, then the screw, then the blade, then all the hardware. You're looking at a significant amount more parts that have to be assembled and the ease of assembly and build up on this are better. The other thing too is, they are very robust. It is really hard. A lot of people are like, oh, well, frame locks will fail if you spine whack. I got news for you. I don't use my knife like this. I don't use it as a hammer. So if you've got this knife in a natural grip, you are, you are doubling up that lock. There's a lot of knives that have a secondary lock mechanism um, where you push a button after you open it and then it locks that lock. Well, with a frame lock, you're already doing that. Because if you're holding that knife in a proper grip, you're preventing that lock from coming loose. You're not going to have that come loose on you. And then the other thing it allowed companies to do was, titanium is a very unique material. You can do a lot of stuff. I do like liner locks because you can put scales and things on them and you can do fancy work on them. But there was a lot of things that they realized they could start doing with a full knife like this with like a frame lock you could anodize the material you could mill it you could add inlays and things like that on it and you just maximize it so it gave them a little bit more working space on the knife and it also cut back their machining times and that's why it has stayed popular and the fact is it's an amazing lock um my favorite knives historically are frame lock knives because they have a very unique feel they have a unique sound they definitely have that feel and click and it just nails it every time. And the fact is these locks, these springs go bad. This lock, these springs can go bad. This lock, the spring can go bad. Guess what? This has a lot of travel before this will ever go bad. You have to try really hard to get one of these all the way over. Now there are some cheaper ones that come over, but as this wears, this is built so this wears and matches together and you have a longer life on that knife. And it just winds up being a very satisfying feel. So it has been popular for a very long time and that's why I just thought that we would go through some of the reasons why. And especially for knife makers, the simpler they can do it, the better it is for them because they don't have to spend as much time on the machine. So. Just a little insight. I thought it would be fun. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, and I'll send you out about your day. So, guys, just, just the sheer fact that it is so simple. When you have something that is that simple, the less complex something is, the less chance of failure. To tell you the truth, the more complex you make a mechanism, the more chances you have of it going bad. And the fact is, it's still an amazing lock. I still love them. I like all the other locks as well. But I have to say, frame locks have historically been my favorite knives. So with that being said, that's the end of this video. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why. Because I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. I did not throw an ad in this one, but you guys do know Coffee Brand Coffee is a channel sponsor as well as Tempered Trail. They both have links down below with discounts built into those links. Go check them out. Coffee Brand Coffee, zero zero guilt purchase. They don't support any causes right or left. They don't take any political stance and they have a money back guarantee. And Temper Trail is making the best laces you're going to find for your hiking boots and stuff like that. They are almost indestructible. Lots of different colors. He's also making wallets and kilties for your boots. He's got a lot of stuff coming. Um, there is coupon code for, for crazy, uh, I'm sorry, for, for Rosecraft blades and Fair and Forge Knifeworks. It is crazy sharp. All one word. Saves you 5% at checkout, I believe. I've got an Amazon store. You can take that, put it in your browser, use it for any Amazon shopping you're going to do. It definitely supports the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. And I have a membership that is tier-based. Everyone gets early access to every video the second I get done loading it to YouTube. 
They have immediate access. They get exclusive content. They have access to my private Discord. The baseline and premium guys, because it is it is three tiers, the baseline and premium guys are both are all entered into giveaways automatically that I do. And the premium guys are, they have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube, that medication. Sorry, guys. Uh, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. I'll see you in the next video.